Hello and welcome to this video on power factor. To begin with, I'd like to introduce the topic of power factor, but to do this, uh, I've got a small circuit here to illustrate. I have a series RL circuit uh, connected to a, an AC voltage source. And the reason I want to use this circuit is because it's quite a, a, a common um, circuit and it's a useful illustration of uh, the topic of power factor and the different types of power that you can get in a, uh, an AC circuit. Um, a, a common application of a circuit like this might be an AC motor. Uh, a motor, if you think about it, is simply uh, a coil or, or several coils of wire and, and, and that's pretty much it. The, the, the coils create an electromagnetic field um, which, which drives the motion of the motor. But uh, a coil of wire has an inductance, first of all, and also because of its length, a very, very long length of wire, is also going to have a resistance as well. And so, really, you can think of a motor as being two components, uh, like we have here. Uh, both of these components together could represent something like an AC motor, for example. The specific application doesn't really matter in this instance. We're just going to look at some of the theory in this circuit, which is going to lead us on to the topic of power factor. So to begin with, I want to mention the different types of power that exist in this circuit. You might have calculated electrical power before, measured in watts, uh, but we're going to look at actually three different types of power that exist in this circuit in this particular video. The first of which we've just mentioned there, um, power measured in watts, we're usually referring to what's called real power. And real power is dissipated in a resistive component. So a resistor like the one we have here is going to dissipate real power. And real power is measured in watts. We also have an inductor in this circuit and an inductor is a reactive component and reactive components dissipate reactive power and so we also have an example of reactive power in this circuit and reactive power is not measured in watts it's measured in what we call VARs so V A R in capitals like that and really these, these units are totally equivalent. Um, one watt is the same sort of magnitude as, as one var, but we differentiate them and call them different names to make it clear if we're, if we're talking about vars, we know that we're talking about reactive power. If we're talking about watts, we should be talking about real power. So the units help us uh, differentiate between the two. Finally, together, um, these two types of power combined to, to give a total power as it were and that's referred to as apparent power so apparent power is our third type of power apparent power and that's measured in volt amps usually just shortened to VA so apparent power measured in volt amps unfortunately combining our real power with our reactive power is not just a case of adding the two together. Uh, because of the phase difference or the phase shift between reactive components and resistive components, we have to represent these powers in the form of a power triangle. So I'll sketch um, our power triangle here very quickly. Along the bottom, uh, or the, the x-axis as it were, we have our real power, and we usually give that the letter P, for power, that's our real power. And we said before that it's measured in watts. Up the side, we have our reactive power. And that's usually given the letter Q. And Q represents the reactive power. And we said that that was measured in vars. Together we can find the magnitude of the apparent power 
and the apparent power is going to look something like this where we have um, a, a, a diagonal sort of magnitude uh, which is a vector addition of both the power and the reactive power. We usually give this the letter S so S represents our apparent power and like we said before it's measured in volt amps. We also have an angle here and this angle is important and it relates to the topic of power factor which we'll get onto in just a second but you'll notice here that the proportionality of the real power and the reactive power dictates the direction of this arrow here. If Q gets smaller then S is not going to stand as tall, it's going to approach um, and get closer and closer to P. As the reactive power gets bigger S is going to be dragged upwards in its angle and we'll have S sort of traveling off in a, in a steeper sort of direction. So this, this angle is important and it relates to our topic of power factor. Power factor is simply defined as the ratio between the real power and the apparent power. So what we're saying really is, of the apparent power, how much of it is real power? Why is this important, first of all? Well, real power is what we can call useful power. Real power does useful work, whereas reactive power we can think of in most circumstances as being useless power. Reactive power is actually wasted power. And so in most situations we want to try and minimize reactive power and have as much real power as possible. And so really we want the angle here of the apparent power to be as small as possible. So like we said before the power factor is the ratio of the real power to the apparent power. How much of the apparent power is real and useful. And so we can write our equation like this. Power factor is equal to P over S. If you know your trigonometry we can just make a slight adjustment to our diagram here. We can add a, a, a vertical line in here which will be equal to Q. Um, the, 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 same, the same height on, on both sides, or they should be if I've drawn my diagram accurately. Um, now we can see that we have our triangle a little bit more clearly and S being the hypotenuse and P being the adjacent of our angle. And if we know our trigonometry we know that cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so what we can actually say is that P over S, the adjacent over the hypotenuse, is equal to cos of the phase angle. And so our power factor also has another definition. It's equal to cos theta. This angle is also useful because it tells us the phase difference or the phase shift between the current and the voltage in our circuit. We know that uh, inductors uh, create a lagging effect um, for currents in the circuit. And because that's the case, uh, we know that the current is going to lag by a certain angle. And that angle is actually the same angle as this one in our power triangle here. Let's put this into practice with a worked example. So for my circuit on the left here, we now have a supply voltage of 240 volts AC. And my circuit here, let's, let's say it's a motor, is pulling a current of 10 amps. Let's say that I also know that my motor is dissipating a, a real power of 800 watts. So I'll mark on here that P equals 800 watts. 
So let's use this example to calculate first of all the other types of power in my circuit as well as the power factor and its angle. The first thing we can do is calculate the apparent power or the total power for the whole circuit. And the reason we can do this is because we know the current that's supplied to the whole circuit as a series circuit and we know that the voltage supplying the whole circuit is 240 volts. We know the formula for power is voltage times current and that applies just the same for apparent power and so what we can say is S equals voltage times current so in this case 240 times 10 which gives us an apparent power of 2400 volt amps. Now because we know the real power which was marked on our diagram and we know the apparent power we can calculate our power factor. We know that the power factor, um, I'll just mark it as PF, is equal to P over S. And in our case, P is 800, and S we now know is 2400. And that gives us a power factor of a third. And so what we're really saying here in some sense is, of all of the power that's being dissipated in our circuit here, only a third of it is useful. Two thirds of it is reactive power and which can generally be thought of as wasted power. And so in many industrial scenarios we want to try and minimize uh, the, the reactive power. Um, that's achieved by something called power factor correction which we're not going to go into in this video but you might want to look up as well. Finally because we know the power factor is a third we can now calculate the phase angle. We know, I'll just mark on at the side here, that the power factor is equal to cos of the phase angle. And so a slight rearrangement would be to say that the phase angle, theta, is equal to cos to the minus 1 of the power factor. So let's go ahead and do that. We can say that theta is equal to cos to the minus 1 of our power factor, which is a third and that gives me an angle of 70.53 degrees. We can now go ahead and try to build up a power triangle for our particular circuit. And this is just a rough sketch and, and not to scale by any means, but we can mark on some values on our power triangle. First of all, we know that S uh, the apparent power is 2400 volt amps. We know that the power um, is 800 watts. We know that our angle is 70.53 degrees. But we don't know the reactive power yet. That's the one that we don't know. But fortunately, just a little bit of trigonometry can help us work that out. If you remember, our triangle from before, we know the hypotenuse, which is um, our apparent power here. We know the real power, which is our adjacent. And the opposite would be Q, our reactive power. And so we can work out the opposite of our triangle by just doing a little bit of uh, trigonometry. Um, we know that the opposite is the hypotenuse multiplied by sine of the angle. And so in this case, we can say that Q, which is our opposite, uh, or the reactive power, is equal to the hypotenuse, which is S, multiplied by sine of our phase angle there. And so we can substitute some values in here very quickly. We can say that Q is equal to 2400 multiplied by sine of our angle 70.53 and plugging that all into a calculator gives me an answer of 2262.76 and it's a reactive power so it's measured in vars. So the last thing I'll mark on my diagram here is our reactive power. 2262.76 vars.
Dios. We've now completed our power triangle and we know the values of the three different types of power in our circuit. We've also calculated the power factor and the phase angle. One other thing that might be useful in uh, an example such as this is we can now use our values of power to determine something about the parameters of the components that we have in our circuit. We have a resistor and an inductor and we don't know the resistance of this particular resistor nor do we know the reactance of this inductor but we can actually work them out now because we know the powers in question. So the way we're going to do that and I'll just make a little note to the side is simply to use Ohm's law. We know uh, Ohm's law which is to say that um, V equals I times R and we also know the formula for power which is power equals current times voltage. Well I want to sort of combine these two formulas really because if we look at this expression here for power it contains voltage but we know that voltage is equal to I times R and so what I can do is I can revisit this formula for power I can say power is equal to current not times voltage but times by I times R so we have a substitute um, in this case and that formula can be simplified to power equals I squared times R and we're going to take advantage of this um, but first of all rearrange it slightly R is equal to the power divided by I squared. So let's put that into practice here because we know the power in our circuit and we know the current in our circuit we can calculate the resistance but remember with uh, the resistance we're concerned about real power and so our formula is going to look something like this we can say that R is equal to power which is 800 watts divided by I squared which is 10 squared 10 amps in our circuit Calculating that gives me an answer of 8 ohms. We can repeat the same process to calculate the reactance of our inductor. We've just calculated the resistance of our resistive element here, but we've got an inductor here which is also going to have a reactance. And what we can do is we can use the same formula but re-express it in terms of reactance rather than resistance. So what I can say here is rather than R I can say that X or XL for the reactance of the inductor is equal to not uh, not power but but rather reactive power Q this time divided by I squared because it's the same current that goes through the whole the whole of the circuit here. And so I can calculate that as well I can say X uh, or XL is equal to our reactive power which was uh, 2262.76 divided by uh, that same current 10 squared and that gives me uh, a result of 22.63 ohms. So I hope you found this video useful calculating real reactive and apparent power and then also considering the angle of that apparent power to determine power factor and then also using these uh, derived values of power to calculate some of the circuit parameters in this case resistance and reactance in the circuit itself.